Welcome to, to, uh, to the DELC in Conversations. Today we're going to explore the world of Dr. Derek Hurd, uh, the head of the department, deputy director of Lancaster University Confucius Institute and senior lecturer in Chinese studies. So welcome Derek. How Thank are you, you very doing? much. How are you? Uh, I'm very well, thanks. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you. So, uh, since you are a Chinese studies specialist, uh, could you tell us your research interests? Certainly. My research interests uh, focus on masculinities in China. And uh, for uh, many years, I've been investigating this topic uh, through various uh, methods, uh, including ethnographic research methods uh, involving interviews uh, uh, with men in China, uh, and also um, a participant observation, taking part in leisure activities and uh, even um, observing men in, in working environments and in home environments as well in China. So there's that kind of anthropological side to uh, my research, but I also look at uh, texts and online um, uh, websites, uh, men's magazines, um, print men's magazines were still very prominent when I started researching this in the first decade of the 21st century. So Chinese masculinities, uh, white collar masculinities in particular, because this is the new group of, of men, a kind of middle class uh, model of masculinity that's emerged uh, on the back of, the, of Chinese economic development. Uh, and uh, society and the uh, class structure in China has become a lot more complex in, in recent years. Uh, and uh, the Chinese white collar man has become a very important player in that. And just to add, I don't just uh, research Chinese masculinities. I also have looked at happiness in Chinese uh, society. Uh, and I've looked at the concept uh, of uh, positive energy, which has become very uh, pervasive uh, in uh, popular culture as well as in some political um, uh, circles as well. Uh, and uh, I have looked at, um, uh, in addition to that, Chinese film and a recent uh, research project, Chinese literature, um, it's especially involving um, the author Ha Jin, who is a Chinese writer who now lives in America and writes in English. And uh, one final thing uh, is that I've looked also at um, the way in which uh, male beauty vloggers are producing new kinds of masculinities on Chinese social media. So a lot of things uh, going on and very, very exciting uh, at the same time. That's beautiful. Very interesting. Um, many research themes. Thank you. And um, well, since I am a sinologist as well, but I'm still a very tiny component of the Chinese studies team in our department. Uh, could you describe the role you cover within the structure of the China related courses at LU? Certainly. Yes. So uh, I should say that uh, we've been teaching Chinese for years now at Lancaster, uh, and uh, th there's been a, a process of building up the uh, the Chinese courses. And in recent years, we've uh, started um, adding in uh, new modules. And uh, uh, this year, we've developed uh, new degree programs that we've launched, uh, combining Chinese with other languages. Next year, we're launching another suite of uh, degree programs with Chinese and other disciplines, non-language disciplines. Uh, uh, such as um, politics and history and theater and film and uh, and, and so on um, uh, ac in, across the disciplines in, in, in the university. Um, now, uh, in terms of my own involvement in teaching, I teach on a Chinese cultural uh, course in the first year. Uh, and this has been one of the, the most uh, exciting developments where we bring together language and culture together uh, on that course. Uh, it's one of the um, hallmarks of the Lancaster course that we re recognize that lang language and culture work together in tandem uh, at all times. So the, the language elements of the course involve culture and the cultural elements involve language. So in the uh, first year culture courses, we, we take a, a look at Chinese uh, society and, and, and 
culture through very important historical uh, works of art, works of literature, film, uh, model opera, um, all sorts of different things uh, that have that have been produced at different times in Chinese history. In fact, we, we start about 3000 years ago and come right up to the present day. I'm also involved in teaching a final year undergraduate module on Chinese culture and society, which which looks at a, a vast array of uh, aspects of Chinese culture from the philosophy of the warring states period uh, through to the family as an institution uh, to the political development of communism in the 20th century, uh, Chinese art and literature and much more. So these are exciting modules. But uh, as, as I said, as part of the development of Chinese at Lancaster, we, w we are developing even more modules, uh, such as in the second year, we'll have a core Chinese cultural module. Chinese is being inserted into our comparative modules. So we ha have a number of comparative cultural team top modules at Lancaster, which look at certain uh, uh, um, uh, aspects of uh, cultural production, like film, for example, from different cultural perspectives. So that students, when they do a Lancaster degree, they could specialize in, in, in the cultural area they're interested in, but they can also get that global perspective uh, uh, that uh, looks at their cultural area in comparison with, uh, with, with others. And uh, by the time the final year arrives at undergraduate level, there are very specialist research informed um, uh, uh, modules that we teach. So, for example, we'll be looking uh, at uh, men and masculinities in the final year module uh, on the undergraduate degree in China. Now, I should add that we also have an MA in translation, which we have a Chinese stream on. So we have Chinese um, English translation uh, options uh, in that MA translation. And I supervise uh, a a MA students in that Chinese English stream. Uh, and uh, finally, we have PG, uh, PGR students, postgraduate research students such as yourself. And you're doing, of course, an extremely interesting project on leftover women. Uh, and uh, that, that's a, a very exciting and topical area to be looking at. And, and we, I, I supervise a number of students uh, with colleagues from across the institution. Well, that's what, what you said about the language and the culture. It's, we, we know that it, it is a fundamental element when you learn a language. And that's beautiful that there are so many areas in which students can uh, just delve into. So then eventually, as I already said, you're also the deputy director of the well-established Confucius Institute. So. Which kind of activities are fostered uh, by the CI staff to promote the Chinese language and culture? Yes, well, uh, there are a lot uh, of, of, of very interesting activities uh, that, that we uh, undertake and that engage uh, our local communities in. And I should add at the outset that we won CI of the year, Confucius Institute of the year last year, and we were very proud to, to, to win that honour. Uh, globally, there are very few Confucius Institutes that are awarded this status. And it's testimony to the, to the hard work that uh, the CI staff put in. So we have um, three uh, well-established Confu uh, Confucius teaching sites. So two Confucius classrooms in Blackpool. We have a Confucius teaching site in uh, Carlisle. And uh, we've just added another uh, uh, Confucius uh, teaching site in Morecambe. So we, we're actually engaged across the Northwest region. In Blackpool, we have well-established teaching sites, uh, Confucius classrooms in uh, two uh, local schools. Uh, that's Horside uh, Academy and Anchors Home Academy. Um, and uh, the, the involvement of the children in, in the activities there, the way in which they learn about Chinese language and culture is, is a great delight to see. And uh, I'm so glad that we're able to bring that to hundreds of students every week uh, there in Blackpool. We have this unique uh, collaboration with Tully House Museum and Art Gallery uh, uh, and the Confucius Institute. Um, so Con Tully House Museum and Art Gallery in Carlisle uh, hosts uh, a teaching site that our staff 
uh, uh, teach Chinese and, and uh, language and culture from, and they also go into the the, the region and the schools to do outreach events. Uh, and I did mention also that fourth uh, site that we just have uh, started in Morecambe uh, at Grosvenor Park School there, and uh, we're absolutely delighted that we've got a, a a teaching site close to home. So besides these teaching sites, we also are involved in school outreach events. So every year we go out to tens and tens of schools in the local and wider region to promote Chinese language and culture. We take part in lots of local festivals, Light Up Lancaster. Uh, we take part in, in the um, Chinese New Year celebrations, of course, uh, and um, lots of the um, uh, kind of civic engagement activities uh, that Lancaster University uh, undertakes as part of its role as a civic university, uh, you will find the Confucius Institute uh, involved there. And uh, we're very proud of the way in which we bring Chinese language and culture, share it uh, with the, um, the population in, in the region. That's beautiful. Um, and uh, well, uh, I, I just thank you very much for, for having spent these minutes with me talking. And uh, thank you everyone for watching this video and uh, we really hope that you will be soon part of this community at Lancaster University. Thank you very much Bye. and thank you, Derek. Bye. Thank you, Francesca. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.